Okay, so here we are at section 2.6, uh, reading input from the keyboard. And I'm just going to say it, this is an extremely important section. So uh, as, we're, as we're going through this, and there aren't too many slides, but we're going to go through some code along the way too, just so you can get the hang of it. Uh, but make sure you understand how this section works. So uh, watch this video, walk through the slides, play with the code, uh, and then I would suggest coming back and watching this video, the link to this, it's also available in Canvas down at the bottom of the module. Uh, watch this video from Tony Gaddis and uh, get a little bit different perspective, but uh, it'll be, then hopefully by then it's a review for you and, uh, and you should be good to go. All right, so the reason I say this is extremely important is because we are going to be using the built-in input function the rest of the semester for virtually every single program that you write. Okay, so what we've done so far is we, when we're writing the program, we've set our variables, uh, we, we've set a value equal to them, and uh, we've done it in the program. Uh, that's all great. It's good practice for us. Uh, but most of the programs that you're going to to uh, use will need to ask input from the user and that's the key for us okay so uh, we're going to use this input function to get the user to pop in data read in data for us uh, and uh, and then store it in with a variable then we can calculate and things like that so for example uh, you know when we were setting age equal to 49 earlier now what we're going to do is we're going to say age equals we're going to use an input function and we're going to ask the user how old are you and that allows us to as the program executes each time as we have a different user each time let's let's the program dynamically change that as they type something in so uh, it's much more realistic in uh, terms of coding all right so here's the way this works the input function by default returns the data as a string so we're gonna that's totally fine uh, but if we want data like age from the user then we're gonna have to tell the computer that we want to uh, store it as a number okay so that's totally fine here's the format of it so we're going to take our variable name whatever we'd like to do so if you look down here I used first name we're going to use equal here the equal sign again so our assignment operator and then we're going to have a function now this input function works just like the print function in terms of here is the name of the function we open a parenthesis when we're done we close a parenthesis okay and typically what you'll see inside is a prompt so some type of instructions telling the user what you're looking for okay so we're going to say enter your first name all right if we just say enter your name that's not descriptive enough because the user is going to go well do they want my whole name you know my middle name like everything like what do i put in there so really simple just you know just be descriptive with these questions with these little statements coming out for your prompts so that you get uh, the data back that you're looking for okay uh, and it does not automatically display a space after the prompt so you'll see between this colon there is a space and then the um, single quote here okay or apostrophe whatever you want to call it all right so that way when the user sees this displayed um, the cursor is not like right on top of it okay or sometimes you'll see people won't put this on here so try and get in the habit of making it look I mean, make it look pretty right so that it looks nice for your user so just as an example let's go ahead let's jump over here and we are in uh, python tutor here so uh, python tutor.com and here is our line okay so we've got first name here's our input opening a parenthesis here's our string question or prompt to uh, see you know tell the user what we're looking for uh, we've got a space there then we've got the closing of the quote and the parenthesis so when I hit visualize execution uh, in Python Tutor, it runs a little bit differently, so it'll put it down below. So if you have a lot of code and you come to an input from the user, just know that it's going to be down here. Okay, so it's going to say, enter your first name. So if I say, okay, my first name is Jeff, and I hit submit, it will then create this variable in here. Here we go, first name, storing the value Jeff. Notice how it's in quotes, because the computer's storing it as a string. Okay, so then it, it shows you what that would look like up here. Okay, so you don't necessarily see it right away. So that's why I like the like a colon and a space, or I mean, some, something to set this apart uh, so that the user, when they're looking at this, Python 2 is a little bit different. Uh, if we were in, later when we're in REPL, you'll see it, you'll see the question and actually see the cursor blinking if you don't put any of this stuff. Um, it'll, it'll you know, list it there and you'll, you'll see it and you'll go, oh man, I, I, sh I should change that. So, or hopefully you see that. Anyway, okay, so let's go back to our, to our code here and uh, back to editing. So again, you must have a place for the computer to store 
the variable that's returned from the user, the input that's returned from the user. Okay, so here's my variable name. If we were to just type in here, and you'll do this, trust me, you'll do this by, by mistake, you'll do this and you'll go, oh man, why didn't that work? Okay, here's a perfectly written input statement, right? So we're totally fine with this, but there's no place for the computer to store it. So it doesn't know what to do. Okay, so you have to have a place for it to store the data that's going to come back from the user. All right, so that's very important for you to, to get. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. On the next, uh, the next PowerPoint slide, you'll see some more code. Here we go with um, our, our program here. In fact, I'm just going to open this in Python Tutor. Uh, so here we go. So we have, you notice the comments in here. So you should be getting the hang of commenting your code now so you can label these things. So we're going to say, uh, we're looking for the user's first name. So here we go with that same exact uh, statement we had earlier. So first name equals, and then we have input, and then here's our um, prompt, and closing the quote here. Now here comes last name as a second variable, okay? And then input, last name, and we're good to go. Notice the print statement now, print, we said hello in quotes, and then a comma, first name, which will be whatever this person put in here, comma again, and last name here. You must put the commas in between each one of these, otherwise you'll get an error there. Okay, so when I hit visualize execution, I'm going to put my first name, and that's going to ask for my last name, I'll just abbreviate it, keep it short, uh, and then, so there are my two options there. My next piece, when I click next, it's going to run this line, which is just going to print out this little hello message. So I'm going to say next, and here we go, hello, Jeff H. All right. So relatively um, straightforward on this, and once you get the hang of it, you'll understand these inputs, and you'll go, "Oh yeah, that's how I that's how I do it." The biggest key, and the thing that people forget about, is having the variable setting the, setting this assignment operator, setting the variable here, variable name here, for it to go. All right. So, like I said, don't be surprised; you'll forget it, and then you'll try to execute, and you'll go, "Oh, I missed that." So, um, so anyway, so that's that. So you can play around with it a little bit now. This, these are returning as strings. You just saw, uh, you know, in Python Tutor, you saw what this looked like. We're returning a string. It stores it as a string uh, in quotes so you can see it. Okay, but what if we want to use numbers? Because remember, if we have strings, we can't use those as calculations. Okay, well, I say we can't. Uh, at this level, we can't. We could do some work to make them work, but uh, we, we will skip that. That's a much more advanced topic that we won't deal with right now. So, uh, but anyway, if it's a string, we cannot calculate with it. All right, and we'll just we'll just leave it at that for now. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's say we wanted to put some numbers in. All right, so we've got reading numbers with the input function. So here we go, input. Remember, once again, always returning a string. Okay, if we wanted to store something as an int, we would simply put int in front of it with our parentheses around it and whatever's in here is going to be converted and stored as an int okay now if it's not a number that's a problem but we're assuming it's a number okay same thing with float so if we want decimal places right uh, same thing put a float this is a built-in function converting this data type i'm going to put float open a parenthesis whatever's in there close a parenthesis it will store it as a float now we don't need to worry too much about this right now but basically what we're doing is we're creating a nested function call. So we're going to do this. This gets a little bit complicated right now. So you can just ignore this part until we, we get to it uh, a little bit later uh, in the semester. But for now, this is what we're doing, basically. So um, we're going to go and uh, convert this just so you can see how it works. OK, so let's take a look at this program. All right, so in this one, in fact, I'm going to pull it up over here. OK, so we are saying get the user's name, age, and income, all right? So in this one, we have three different types of data that we're storing, okay? Because I want to store age as an integer, and I want to store income as a float, okay? Just in case they put the pennies on it, right? Uh, so, that, so that's what we're, we're doing here. Notice how here's our nested function call from the, from the previous slide. This is how this works, okay? So we have, here's our variable name equals what is your name oh this is terrible remember i just talked about don't do this so let's convert this okay first underscore name and then we'll say what is your first name okay so then i have to go down here it's another thing that that you kind of learn because i do this all the time too i'll change something and i'll go oh i didn't change it down below when i go to run it okay so anyway so first underscore name and it'll put that in there okay so here's our variable name 
and we are storing as a string under this input we're saying hey what is your first name okay so when that comes back it will store it as a string in quotes you'll see it in python tutor okay uh when we go to age now we want to convert the entire input function including that little parenthesis on there right so when we are looking at this imagine that this was this one up here right so input open a parenthesis here's our prompt what is your age close the quote of course and then close the parenthesis all right then you notice now the stuff that's in blue okay so that's the input function now you take a look at the integer conversion built-in function here we're taking ent open a parenthesis and then closing it with this one here so notice how it highlights it in python tutor for us so this one goes with this one all right so if you're doing this you notice how this one only has one parenthesis at the end of the line that's because it's storing it as a string we only have an input this one we're saying i want this stored as an integer so i have to have two here okay so you have to watch out for that that's one of the most common mistakes with uh with using this and trying to store numbers is only one parenthesis at the end of the line and then that gives you an error okay so you'll get get an error and you go man i don't know what's going on make sure you check for if you have an open parenthesis you have to close a parenthesis on the opposite side okay so two opens here two closes here okay this one goes to the input statement this one goes with the outside here with the integer conversion okay same thing on the float exactly so for the float i want the income to include decimal places i'm saying float with this opening parenthesis here's my closing parenthesis for that one and then i have the input function inside asking what the income is okay so that's the way this works and then this is our print statement down here remember these are set this string is separated by a comma then the variable name each time down there so let's watch this execute very quickly. And again, this is uh, available for you in um, in the PowerPoint, so you can see this too. Um, so here's my first name. Now, my first name can be anything in here, So, but I'm gonna put first name in there, Jeff. Now, what is my age? This is going to store as an integer. So I'm gonna put 49 in there, okay? What is my income? I don't know, we'll put 1234. I don't really know, one, two, three, four. Here we go. So here we go. So we hit submit. It's going to store that. Notice how each time I did this, each one of these, this is what the computer sees. Remember, behind the scenes. So here are my global variables that I have. I have first name is Jeff. Notice in quotes, that's a string. Age, storing 49 as an integer. Income, storing 12.34 as a float. Okay. Now I entered all the correct things, but watch this. If I go back, I'm going to click edit this code and then visualize again. Now this time, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my name. Doesn't really matter what I put in here, but I don't know, just out of habit, I can't help but put that in there. Now let's say I put 49.7. I'm gonna say submit, and look at this. Invalid literal for int. So I can't put that in there. 49.7 does not work, okay? Because it's looking for an integer value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back, visualize it again, put my name in there. I swear one time I'm not going to put my name in there. Okay, now I'm going to say 49. And when I get to income, watch this one though. Now it's wanting to store decimal places. But if I just put 12 and hit submit, look at this, 12.0. We told it this is going to be a float. So this will store decimal places for us, even if we don't type it right here. We are forcing it with this. So this float command right here is saying whatever number I put in here, hopefully it's a number or it's an error, uh, I want this to be stored as a, uh, a value in here that will include the decimal place. So the point zero is just letting us know by Python Tutor that the computer sees that this is a float. Okay, so again, hopefully you're, you're getting the hang of this. Uh, this is an extremely important thing to understand how these work, these three things. By default, just this one but then ints and floats because we will be doing this for literally every program the rest of the semester pretty much. So, um, so make sure you understand that. So play with this a little bit, um, you know, maybe change the things, add in some new things uh, on your own. We're going to do some programs as part of our homework this week where you get to practice this, but uh, go back to this video. It's also in Canvas, but go back to this video and watch this video from Tony Gaddis. Again, I think this one, because it's a little bit more complicated, is a little bit longer, maybe 
I don't know, I think it's around eight minutes, if I remember right. Uh, but check this video out. Watch what he's um, watch what he's telling you. And yeah, he does things a little bit differently, but pretty much uh, you'll see it's the same same idea. But uh, just gives you another source uh, here. So um, hopefully you get the hang of this. Again, it's just practice. So if you don't get it at the very beginning, you will get it. Um, it just takes practice. All right.